everyday witches emerge from the shadows of secrecy. Broom closets are flinging open and witches are taking flight. Whether you are hiding in your cozy closet or flying with pride, stay for a spell as witch casting with Theodora Pendragon and her guests share magical moments, stir the cauldron and debunk misinformation and misconceptions about paganism, witches and our wonderful world of magic. Today we have another episode with a special guest. Her name is Kai. Hello Kai, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? My name is Kai. I am originally from Hawaii, but I am currently living in Dubai um, for the past seven years. And yeah, I'm excited to share more about my journey today. You are a certified well-being and soul purpose coach. What does that mean? that's a it's quite a it's quite a mouthful when it comes to that and even that title itself i feel like doesn't fully describe what i do but i think it does a pretty good job and for me what i do is i help people through coaching through workshops sometimes sound healing find their purpose or their meaning in life and for me when it comes to well-being well-being to me means your mind body and your soul so a lot of the times i think we forget that we have a soul and we focus very much on our minds and our bodies. So my job is to help people to connect to their soul and to understand you have a, a purpose in life, you know, beyond just working, paying bills or checking the boxes of getting the house and this and this. And just really it's about coming to learn about who you are and why you're here and, and having that and knowing that is what I help um, others do. But you haven't always done this can you tell us about your spiritual journey and how you reached this point in your life? Yeah, like I said, I was born and raised in Hawaii. So I grew up in Hawaii my whole life. And, you know, I think a lot of times people think Hawaii is a very, it is a very spiritual place. So, you know, everyone in Hawaii is very spiritual. It, I wasn't. Um, I was very the opposite of that. I actually grew up very Catholic. Every Sunday I would go to church. You know, I was baptized. I went through the different sacraments, but I still remember when I was, I think in my mid teens, when I was supposed to be confirmed, which is kind of like the last step to becoming like a, a Catholic, um, I had this like big questioning and I wrote down on a piece of paper, probably like two pages worth of questions. And I was like, I will not become a Catholic until I have all of the answers to these questions. And I don't know if those questions were for God or for the church, but I just remember writing these questions down over and over and giving it to my parents. And I remember my parents kind of looked at this and they're kind of like, well, clearly she's, she's not gonna, <laughs> she's not gonna um, go down this path. And they just kind of left me alone with that. And I remember just getting really curious at that point about different cultures, about Buddhism, about Hinduism. But at the same time, I was really young. So I didn't really know much about things, but I was, I was definitely curious when it came to that. And I think that also kind of sparked my love of travel and wanting to explore the world. So then when I was 18, I went to study in New York and then I lived abroad in Prague. And then after Prague, I moved back through Hawaii for a little bit. Then I moved to Spain and then I moved to Texas. And then I moved to Dubai where I am now. And in between all of that moving around the world, I definitely did a lot of traveling kind of like looking for answers, seeking things. I was really curious about different cultures, but it wasn't until I, you know, landed here in Dubai that I really got into spirituality and wellness. And like before that, I was kind of very, very anti-spiritual, like like anti in, in the sense that I would like make fun of people who did yoga. I would make fun of spiritual, anyone who did anything spiritual, I was like you're woo-woo-y or you're weird or you're just a bunch of hippies or just like, you know, just really anti, anti-spirituality. But when I came out to here to Dubai, I, I was a teacher and um, I had a panic attack in my class. And when that happened, it was like something like 
woke up in me and was like, something's wrong. Like there's something wrong. And I remember from that moment wanting to figure out what was wrong with me and starting to get even more curious about, you know, like what was happening? Why was I getting panic attacks? And I, over time, of course, realized it was a combination of things, but that's kind of what like put me into the direction of holistic healing into wellness and then into yoga. Um, so it was that that put me into yoga and yoga was kind of like my gateway into spirituality. Um, of course, the first time I did yoga was strictly for like the physical practice, the asana and the poses. But the more I practice yoga, the more I learned that yoga is much more than the poses. And in fact, the poses or they're called asanas is like less than 10% of yoga. Um, the real yoga is actually that spiritual practice. So then I ended up becoming a certified yoga teacher, learning more about, you know, the chakras, the different systems and in, in the Vedic culture, learning about, then I became a sound healer, learning about energy and frequency and crystals and Reiki, and then learning now and in getting into soul purpose coaching and figuring out how I can use these tools or how I can help others use these tools to be successful in life, to be happy in life, to be healthy in life. So yeah, that's kind of like the, the overall journey of, you know, coming from a very spiritual place like Hawaii and not being spiritual and then coming to the Middle East, which is, you know, a Muslim country and then actually finding spirituality. But here in the Middle East, even though it's a you know Muslim country, they're so respectful and they're so open minded when it comes to other people's cultures. Of course, as long as you're, you know, you're respectful towards them. So it's here that I really found not just my spirituality, but I feel like I found my home with the people I I interact with, with the clients I work with, with you know, the community that's surrounded myself. Dubai can be a very, very superficial place. I know sometimes we see in media how Dubai is portrayed. And I think that's like definitely true, but that's like one aspect of Dubai and Dubai has so many other things. And I'm so fortunate that I've found like my little part of Dubai that's spiritual and happy. And yeah, and that's where I, that's where I am now. <laughs> Describe your typical client. So my typical client, I primarily work with women. Not that I I definitely would like to support some men, but typically women come to me who, you know, are feeling burnt out. I think burnout is a huge thing that, you know, I am able to support with um, burnout. They're feeling burnt out. They're feeling anxious, maybe even stressed. And yes, maybe stressed and depressed. But she's also a very ambitious woman and she's probably very successful in career, her career. However, she's kind of like, what? there's more to life. What is more? What is out there? Why am I here? She's, you know, asking these deeper questions and maybe feeling lost, maybe feeling confused, maybe feeling lonely. And then that's where I, you know, support her. And I teach her, you know, different ways or tools and practices to help regulate her nervous system. So she's not stressed and she's not burnt out. Or, you know, we work through one-on-one -on -one coaching, asking her like, who are you? Who are you really? And, you know, also a big part of my coaching practice is, you know, building a self-love practice and reminding not just myself and my clients, like how important it is to love ourselves. You know, I always say you can't fill from an empty cup. So when you're burnt out, it's because you're always giving and giving and your cup's empty. So learning how to fill that cup from within, because again, that's, that's who I used to be. So a lot of the clients are, that's, that's who they are. And they're also, they're also a former version of me. That's who my client is or, or, yeah. Are your clients from different religions, maybe even the Muslim people in your community? Yeah, yeah, actually I do. I do have clients who are Muslim. Um, I have clients who are from different parts of the Arab world, different parts of, you know, Western Europe, US and Australia. And again, it's, it's even though it is spirituality, I, I feel like there are some things that are just universal when it comes to the soul. It doesn't matter what religion you are what background you come from. These are all questions of the soul. So as long as you have a soul, I'm, re I'm here, I'm working with you. And I don't see beyond that really. So yeah, different backgrounds and different age groups and different career paths. Yeah. You said that the Muslim people are very respectful of people who have different religions. Have you had anybody in your community tell you that what you're doing is, you know, just a little bit out there or maybe that's not something you should be doing or is everybody very accepting of it 
Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is the person who has said the harshest things about what I'm doing is my own inner voice. <laughs> it's my own inner critic who's always like, you're doing something that is wrong. You're doing something that is not okay or weird or off. Um, I think it's just because I was raised so Catholic that I have specific beliefs that I'm still trying to, you know, work through. But to be honest, as far as it comes to anyone in the community, um, I've never gotten any kind of feedback like this. Again, I am very respectful and I'm very mindful of other people's cultures. And I also know that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. So I know, you know, if someone's open to speaking to me, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, much more open to sharing with them. But if someone is like, you know, like they're like, oh, what are these sound bowls or these sound healings? I'm like, oh. These are, these are just, you know, some sounds to, you know, make nice things for you to relax. So I also kind of adjust myself in the sense of how people approach me. And, but I haven't had any, any negative from anyone except myself. It's that inner critic that, that, that I'm always trying to silence. So, so no, they've been very respectful of, of what I do. So the negative thoughts come from within and you're thinking maybe it's from your early Catholic indoctrination. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's my inner critic. It's it's those things that I kind of were ingrained when I was growing up. Yeah, it's definitely from there because I, I don't have any any other places. I always think about where did this come from? And then the voice is like either my dad's voice or someone else's voice, even the wording, the way they speak. I'm like, that's not how I speak. And so that's how I know it's, it's probably come from my past. But you said that w before you went to confirmation... You had lots of questions. Your parents did not force you to follow through with your confirmation. They didn't force me because I was very, <laughs> I don't know, how, uh, rebellious. So when I moved away from Hawaii and I moved to New York, I would say from my late teens to mid 20s, I had a very complicated relationship with my parents because I feel like they maybe thought like what I was doing with my life wasn't okay. Not that I was doing anything related to spirituality, but because I feel like I've always been someone who, you know, you like they take, say there's two forks in a road and I took the one less traveled. That was me. Like I always took the other path. Like even if it wasn't spirituality, you know, I was going off to New York to study instead of somewhere closer to home. So I was always kind of like that rebellious kid. So even though it wasn't specifically spirituality, I did have that, you know, rebellious nature. And there was a lot of kind of conflict when it came to them in, in my teens when I was resisting, you know, my last step of becoming a Catholic. You took the fun road. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. I definitely feel that when I look back at life, I'm like, gosh, I had a lot of fun and I still got a lot more fun to, to go, you know? <laughs> Do your parents know what you're doing now, virtually? Yeah, they're actually really proud of me today. They've come a long way themselves. In the beginning, they're very skeptical, just like I was. They weren't really open-minded to what I was doing, but, you know, I would go home. I would do, like, let's do yoga, let's do yoga. They would do it, like, begrudgingly. And then I would go home the next time and be like, let's do sound healing, let's do sound healing. And then they'd do it begrudgingly. I think they just, over time, they started to get more curious. And then I remember my dad asking me like some questions and I was like, why don't you read this book, dad? Slowly, it was like one book at a time. And, you know, I didn't get him into anything heavy. It was very more of like, kind of like dipping his toes into spirituality and wellness. I don't think they're there today, but last time I went home, I went to a crystal shop with my mom and she was like, really into it. So they've also come around over the past few years to really like be open minded and curious about what I do versus before I'm very like skeptical and like, maybe even just mostly confused. But yeah, today we're in a really good place than where we were before. <laughs> You've had the fortunate opportunity to live in different places, a few states in a few countries. Have you noticed how spirituality is different in all those places? Or would you say pretty much we're all the same? I Both, like I can't even, yeah, that's a good question. Like it's really interesting because when I go home to Hawaii, it's like there's different ways. Like I'll, I'll go to a yoga class in Hawaii and it is not spiritual at all. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like, where's the spiritual yoga? 
But I am so lucky to meet a group of amazing spiritual women in Hawaii. And I went to a women's circle with them. And I was like, oh, my gosh, these are my people, just like in Dubai. So, yeah, I do think, yeah, you're right. In the root of it, it is all the same. But sometimes, I guess, I see different versions of things. And I'm like, oh, that's not similar to what I resonate with. But, yeah, they, they are. They are the same at the end of the day. When you find the people that align with you. Because I feel like there's so many different pockets of spirituality and not every part of spirituality I feel like I'm aligned with. But when I do find it, it is definitely the same. Yeah, spirituality is very personal. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't fit in a little box. It doesn't fit in one church or one mosque or one synagogue. I believe that very individual and we have the Mm -hmm. choice to do whatever we want. Absolutely same, yeah. You went to a crystal shop when you went back home. Were they popular before you left Hawaii? No, I don't think so. They had a few of them, but they're definitely new because even like when I go there, they're like, you you know, you check their like Instagram nowadays, right? And you see that they've been around or like, I'll talk to them like, oh, how long have you been here? And they've said like five or 10 years. So yeah, definitely it's, it's a lot more. I think there's a lot more of, coming up different spirituality, different crystal shops nowadays, or at least in Hawaii. I noticed that here in Texas too, because they're, they're starting to pop up everywhere. These metaphysical shops and you can buy your herbs and your crystals. I would say probably 15 years ago, there was two in my area. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's all these shifts happening that are, you know, like in current events that, you know, people are maybe leaning away from certain things where they used to go to and more towards spirituality like for example for me like it was when I had that panic attack you know going on meds was the last thing in my mind not that there's anything wrong but just I wanted to go in a different direction you know versus maybe 15 20 years ago that would probably been the first right like the first kind of solution back then maybe and you plan to stay in Dubai for quite a while because that's where you feel at home Yes, absolutely. Yes. Like I said, I've been here for seven years and I hope to stay here for another seven years. When I first came here, I the plan was to come for two years and then leave. But obviously so many things changed since then. And it, I'm so happy that they have and where I ha- have ended up to today or where my life is taking me being here. Can you see yourself there for the rest of your life or do you think it's just for now? I see myself for at least 10 years. Like, I would love to have my children to grow up here. I would love to have them, you know, grow up in a very multicultural place. And it's super safe here. So definitely, at least like the next 10 years, I see myself here. After you leave Dubai, where do you see yourself going where you will take your spiritual business with you? Southeast Asia is just six, seven hours from here. And you know, just growing up in Hawaii, I definitely need to be somewhere warm, you know, so like growing up in Hawaii is a warm place, Dubai is a warm place. So maybe in Southeast Asia, because it is warm, and it does remind me, you know, of home, because there's a lot more nature. So I feel like that could be a great place for for me to end up in the later years. But yeah, definitely somewhere warm has to be warm. I I can't do the cold. I tried New York, I tried Europe. It's (laughs) It didn't work. A Texas almost worked because it's not too cold there, but I just prefer to be warm. (laughs) I saw on your website that you are a meditation teacher. Mm -hmm. What do you do as a meditation teacher? Meditation is such a big word. And for me, it's about helping not just myself or my clients find a meditation practice that works for them. So personally, my meditating is for for me, it's practicing mindfulness. And mindfulness is about just focusing on one thing and kind of allowing the other thoughts to disappear. So for me, when I literally like in the morning, I cannot check my phone, I cannot do anything until I've had like my first cup of coffee. And that first cup of coffee, like it is do not disturb. I am just focusing on my coffee. And then I have this song that I listen to every morning. And that's kind of like my little mindfulness practice that I do every single day. Again, just to like focus on one thing, focus on that coffee I'm drinking, focusing on that song. So when it comes to meditation or practicing mindfulness, I always like to encourage people to find a mindfulness practice that works for them. 
you know, like not all of us, like very few of us can just like sit in a cross-legged position and like have zero thoughts. Like that's almost impossible. So again, it's just really helping people break down like what is meditation? What is mindfulness? And how can you practice it in a way that feels good for you? You know, because like we're all unique beings and we all have our own different ways of doing things. And when you find something that fits you, you're able to do it on a daily basis. And I think that's the most important thing is like consistency when it comes to practicing meditation and mindfulness. You left your religion of origin because it didn't resonate with you. You didn't get a whole lot of pushback from your family, but there are people who want to leave their religion of origin but they're afraid because their family may not accept that they are choosing a different path. What advice would you give them? Yeah, I definitely do understand that. And I think it's important for us to understand, like, we all have our own journeys in life. And I know how important it is to feel loved and accepted by our families, especially that's like the first people we come into this world with. But also knowing that, like, you can also create your own family. I call it my tribe. So you can find your own tribe. And it is scary. I will completely acknowledge it is scary to kind of go out there, put yourself, but your tribe is out there waiting for you. You know, those people are out there. And hopefully they're kind of in that sense, like, for example, for me, I left kind of like, literally like physically left my family right in Hawaii. I felt like searching all over the world for my tribe and I ended up in a Muslim country, which I'm not Muslim at all, but I completely found my tribe. So that's what I would just say is like your tribe is out there and they're waiting for you. And that is family, you know, your tribe is family and who knows your family may come around like mine definitely did, but your tribe is out there and you just need to let yourself be seen and find them. And they're looking for you as well, though. That's right. We can't do it by ourselves. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to add? Oh, yeah. So this is a quote I love saying. I would just like, if anyone's feeling confused or feeling lost or like, what should I do? I always like to say, your soul knows the answers your mind is seeking. And even when I'm working with people, they like, oh, tell me my soul purpose. Like, I don't know your soul purpose. You know your soul purpose. But I am here to help you, give you tools and practices. So if you're not sure about anything, just know like all the answers are within and there's different ways. Just allowing yourself to connect to your soul to find that guidance that you need is, it's within you. You know, that's, that's it. Yeah, everything's within you. I believe that too. We just have to listen. We have to learn how to listen. Yeah, exactly. Listen to, you know, whatever you call it, your soul, your higher self, the yeah. spirit intuition Mm -hmm. we can call it all different names it's the same thing exactly exactly thank you kai this has been wonderful and you have a very interesting life (laughs) thanks thank you so glad that you're doing this and you're sharing more about spirituality and not just my story but i'm sure other people's stories so i'm so glad to um, be able to be a part of this and everybody has a a beautiful story and quite unique to everybody else's story. And in a way, sometimes we're very much alike, Mm -hmm. regardless of our path. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. It's great chatting with you. Thank you for joining us for Witch Casting with Theodora Pendragon. Have a burning question or have a topic you'd love Theodora and her guests to discuss on the show? Contact her through Instagram at Theodora Pendragon. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And help us spread the word by leaving us a rating and review and sharing it with your friends. See you next time and may your magic always shine.